In the last video, I talked about the notion of a false negative as one metric that you would use to uh, measure the efficacy of an IPS. Uh, let me now talk about kind of the flip metric, which is called a false positive. And a false positive is when the IPS will call something malicious uh, when, in fact, that traffic flow was actually clean. Okay, so it's, it's mislabeling something clean as malicious. Uh, and and let's, let me talk a bit about what happens in that case. So imagine you've got uh, an IPS or even you know an IDS for that matter. Uh, and, and there's really two modes that an IPS can work in. And, and the two modes are uh, what are called passive mode. And this is the mode where uh, the IPS will just kind of allow the traffic through but make a note, maybe alert on what actually happened. So in passive mode, if a positive is triggered, in other words, if the IPS thinks a particular flow is malicious, it'll trigger an alert in that case, okay? And um, you know, this is typically the domain passive mode. We typically think of this as more of an IDS, which is a detection system rather than an actual prevention system. Uh, and the, the other mode is what's called active mode or kind of blocking mode. Um, and in, in active mode, what you do is when you do notice something that you think is malicious, the IPS will actually go ahead and block that traffic flow. So it's, it results in an actual block as opposed to just an alert. Now, obviously, in general, uh, you don't want to have uh, too many false positives. I, I think it's more dangerous, certainly, if you're just in alert mode, then having uh, extra false positives may not cause any kind of downstream damage, but it, it will actually result in uh, you know, somebody maybe having to sift through that data, figure out what the uh, actual issue was, and determine that, in fact, it wasn't really an issue. Uh, whereas if you are in blocking mode, then a false positive can be more expensive. It can cost you more money because uh, you may actually now affect or block downstream traffic. Now, it turns out that traditional IDSs, and when I say traditional, I mean you know many, many years ago, um, IDSs were notorious for having uh, lots of FPs. And so um, this is something that IDSs uh, had frequently, and this was uh, uh, frequently had FPs. And, and nowadays, I think it's it's more of a non-issue today. Um, you know, they do tend to happen, but for the most part, uh, there's been a lot of effort in terms of being able to fine-tune the way that IPS devices work so that you really don't have as many false positives today as you did uh, back in the day. But it's certainly a metric you would want to use in being able to determine if uh, an IPS is really performing correctly. You want to see how frequently is it having a false positive. And now, like, just like I did with, with, um, with true positives, I want to talk, or false negatives rather, I do want to talk about how how false positives occur, and, and so FPs, and, and this is, let me make this clear, the previous video was talking more about, about false negatives, okay? So false negatives were caused by things like narrow signatures or zero days and uh, timing and things of that nature. Uh, if you want to look at a false positive, a false positive uh, typically would be, called, would be caused by too broad of a signature. Maybe you have a detection capability that's too broad. Uh, so imagine that, uh, Kind of going back to the previous example that I gave, uh, instead of let's say now you are owned or you are now owned, what if you just looked, imagine your, your signature was just looking for the string you are, or maybe just looking for the string you, for that matter, you over port uh, 443. And obviously, uh, just the words you may not be indicative of anything being malicious at all. And so if you, for some reason, put this as your signature, certainly this signature would be used or could be used to capture uh, these threats up here. But this signature may also uh, capture other things that are not really part of that original threat. And that can, in fact, cause a subsequent issue. Uh, and there have been cases like that I've seen uh, since situations in which uh, the string that was used uh, was maybe too generic and there were many legitimate applications that also uh, happened to possess that string and, and, and had that string as part of their network traffic. And so uh, you, know, you definitely will see situations in which a false positive can occur if you're maybe a bit too broad in the signatures you come up with. Okay. There's also kind of another notion, and maybe it, it's more of a gray area, and kind of a, in a gray area kind of residing in here, which is what happens if you have traffic that's maybe in and of itself malicious, but actually is somehow not applicable within the context of a particular enterprise network. And let me let me give you an example. Imagine you've got, uh, imagine you have a, uh, a Windows. So maybe the traffic is exploits a Windows vulnerability. Okay, but the the actual target is a Linux system. Maybe it's a Linux target, or maybe vice versa. Maybe there's a Linux vulnerability that's being exploited by, uh, but that, that you're trying to target against a Windows system. 
Uh, and obviously, if you, if you have a Windows, if the actual network flow is indicative of, of a Windows vulnerability, but the actual physical target system, maybe the entire network is only only comprises you know mostly Linux machines. Uh, in that case, um, the traffic is kind of malicious, but it doesn't really apply because there's no way that somebody could actually exploit, or for the most part, you can't really exploit uh, a Linux target with a Windows vulnerability. I mean, there are you know some strange cases you, you could conceive of in theory, but in practice, this would never happen. Uh, and so you may have a situation in which you have kind of a not applicable, um, I don't know how better way to phrase this, but, um, and I think this actually points to an important notion when, when you look at uh, maybe more traditional IPS devices versus sort of more modern ones. Uh, the more modern ones definitely uh, look at things like the actual context to make a determination about whether an attack uh, actually applies in a real setting. Uh, but I think this is more, uh, it's more of a corner case. I do want to bring it up because it does concern efficacy, but I hope that uh, really that the main two things to keep in mind are FPs and FNs, and that's really where people focus most of their attention.